राधिकाये सदावे कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद भक्ता नमो नम वाछाकोभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णेभ्यो नमो नम यम प्रवजतमुपेत पेत कृत्यम द्वैपाबीर काज पुत्रे तन्मयतयाभूत संसार दुख जलद से पति काम क्रोधादीन क्रम क्लुकृत दुर्वासन से निगृत से निराश्रय से चेतन्य चंद्रम दे चेतन्य चंद्रम दे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपीकांत राधाकांत नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी विश्वभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय भक्तिया विहीनाय अपराध लक्ष्य क्षिप्त कामतरांग मध्य कृपा मयी तम शरण प्रपन्न वृंदे नमस्ते चरण पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तूपस्वरूपक भक्तवतार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्ति शक्ति बोलो हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कॉल एस मर्सी ऑफ श्री गुरुदेव एन इंटायर गुरु परंपरा वी कमिंग एन टू अवर first time ever happening in new york this retreat where i spoke to many devotees and they really like this idea once a year getting along with each other helping each other why for shravanam and kirtanam for hearing and chanting the names of krishna congregational chanting is called retreat and so much learning so much learning not only about the vaishnav sadachar the vaishnav etiquettes but also about insight of bhakti described by our acharyas like rupa goswami moksha lagu takrita sud durlabha संद्रन आत्म विशेष आत्म श्री कृष्ण आकर्षणी चाहिंग क्लेश अग्नि शुभधा वी ऑल कैरिंग सो मेनी इंप्रेस संस्कार फ्रॉम अवर प्रीवियस बर्थ आई एम गोइंग टू टेक फॉरवर्ड ऑल दिस इंप्रेस फॉर द नेक्स्ट लाइफ बट not by accidental but by good fortune <clears throat> we come across a bona fide spiritual master in our life shila gurudev and other acharyas who inspired us and inspiring us first of all to understand what is bhakti about what is first point is understanding bhakti then comes uh, adoption 
if we don't even know what is bhakti what we going to adopt in india so many people born with samskaras religious family go to temples <clears throat> from very birth but they don't know what is bhakti <clears throat> they think going to temple visiting temple giving donation to temple or doing some service to temple this is bhakti they get some credits no problem no doubt some credits but bhakti is totally different <clears throat> the nature of bhakti is what aap indi priti vancha tate bole kaam krishn indi priti vancha dhare prem naam know this anything which is done to satisfy my senses is kaam means kaam means lust not lust but my selfish desires but anything which is done for pleasing the senses of krishna is called prem so when the intent is there to serve the senses of krishna then it is prem throughout our life if we make a ledger what things i do for myself and what things i do only exclusive for krishna so most of the time we perform activities even if it is spiritual activities is for self even if it is spiritual activities why you want to chant hare krishna because it give me happiness and i have to get out get rid of my sufferings and that's why i want to go golok vrindavan <clears throat> so it's my self interest not krishna interest is there that's also come in the ledger my interest why you want to do bhakti because now i understand ek na bhojino prabhu now i understand you are my lord you are my everything there is no one comparable with you i realize this now after so much going through in my life ups and downs i realize ami je tomar tumi je amar i am yours and you are mine only now i want to perform all activities for your pleasure to please you and then come starts the bhakti <clears throat> when bhakti starts shirup goswami par describe just like from the creeper to leaves sprout yeah. one is klesh agni all the kleshas means all the sufferings get destroyed started getting destroyed what are sufferings kleshas to papam tadvijam kleshas to papam tadvijam cheti tuidha all the sins which i performed <coughs> in previous lifetimes those are called kleshas so we already suffering because of our sins and there are so many in the backlog and they are waiting for this sins to go away get destroyed and then they come forward to give us some problems but simultaneously some other auspicious activities also happening shubhda shubhda means all auspiciousness starts happening and what is that shubhda means all activities becomes all mood becomes favorable the surrounding becomes favorable to serve krishna but it's a very elaborate explanation but the important point i want to pick from here is bhakti is sudurlabha very rare for two reasons bhakti is rare one is 
even after performing sadhan for lifetimes, it is so difficult to attain bhakti. Give attention to this. Even after performing sadhan, the pure sadhan for lifetimes, not year times, not month times, is difficult to attain bhakti. And second is, Krishna very calculative and so much considerations also not give bhakti so easy. Mukti dadatit kaharchit samana bhakti yoga. Rajan Pati Guru Alam Bhavata Devu Priyanam Kulpati Kwacha Kinkrova Mukti Dadati Kaharchit Samana Bhakti Yoga Bhagavatam first canto Mukti Dadati Kaharchit Sometimes by seeing our qualification he can grant liberation to us but Samana Bhakti Yoga he don't give Bhakti so easy he don't give Bhakti so easy why if he gives Bhakti and we started doing bhakti, then we are controlling Krishna. So it's not that he don't want to get controlled. He always want to get controlled, but with purity and with selfless, unconditional love. Pran Prabhu is discussing with me this point. What is love means? The word love is spiritual word. It descends from the spiritual world. What we see here, the love is the perverted form of love. Because this world is replica, perverted form, sorry, of the spiritual world. That's from the Shastras. The love which is there in pure state of consciousness. And why it is pure state of consciousness? Because of all activities are there only to please Krishna. And the topmost limit of love that love is Radharani's love for Krishna. What is our aim and object of our life, human life? To attain Krishna Prem. Gurudev asked this in Badger. The aim and object of human life and some devotees said Krishna Prem, another said Radha Prem. Gurudev said, no, no Radha Prem. Krishna Prem. We have to be inspiring to become servant of Radharani, not to get Radha Prem. But only Krishna Prem. There is the aim and object, not even Krishna. The aim is not to attain Krishna. The aim is to attain Krishna Prem. Why? Krishna is attainable even for the demons. Even demons attain Krishna. In Vrindavan, in Braj, so many demons came. Putana, Shaktasur, Trinavrat, Vakasur, Agasur, Vyamasur, Keshi, Arishtasur. All these Asuras, demons, getting killed by Krishna, they attained Krishna. All those demons which are killed in Vrindavan, they got Sarupya Mukti. By Rupa Swami. Because there Krishna is not holding any weapons. He is just killing them with hand, feet, lips and all that. So not any weapons there. Krishna never hold any weapon in Vrindavan. When he goes out from Vrindavan, Dwaraka, there he holds chakra. And he kills demons. And those demons killed by Krishna with weapon get Sayujya Mukti. Those demons which killed by Krishna and Vrindavan got Sarupya Mukti. So they attain Krishna. Attaining Krishna is not a big thing. But getting Krishna Prem, that means the service of Krishna, that is important. And that's why Bhakti is Sudurlava. Very rare. Very beautiful and very rare to attain. But that bhakti has become easily accessible in this Kali Yuga by the great mercy of Krishna, not as Krishna, but Krishna, 
क्लब अप विद राधा रानी एस श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु बिकॉज ऑफ हिस्स मर्सी यू वॉन्ट बिलीव ऋषिज एंड मोनिस दे सिट इन मेडिटेशन तपस्या फॉर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स टू अटेन दैट गोल विच वन कैन अटेन इजिली इन कलयुग बाय कॉन्ग्रीगेशन चैंटिंग ऑफ हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र Don't think this is so easy. Oh, we are just sitting here in AC, a nice fancy room. There's no tapasya. The only tapasya is just we have to sit cross legs for some one or two hours. That's all. And we are just hearing about Krishna. We are chanting Krishna. This is nothing. The real bhakti is, huh? If we're doing yagya for five hours, swaha, swaha, sitting fire and sweating. or doing tapasya austerities that is big don't think like this this is the benediction in this kali yuga just by chanting of hare krishna maha mantra in amongst devotees singing and dancing that bhakti which was rare become easily accessible by the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is kali yuga the benediction in kali yuga therefore people taken birth in kali yuga very fortunate in other yugas it was so difficult in kali yuga become easy with the mercy of mahaprabhu and when i say mercy of mahaprabhu means <clears throat> the embodiment of that mercy is here our gurudev an entire guru parampara this is mercy if you ask a description what is a mercy means is one apple or mango the mercy of mahaprabhu is shri prabhupad shri guru dev and all our acharyas that's the mercy who came in our life and who taught us what is bhakti don't think don't think <clears throat> what pleases to krishna is bhakti but what is good for krishna is bhakti this also considerations that's why we need to hear these topics from the authorities from the vaishnavas from shri guru otherwise we are we think pouring water on shivalinga is bhakti worshiping hanuman is bhakti worship uh, offering water to sun is bhakti bhakti is very subtle very detailed to understand not that which is pleasing to krishna is bhakti but what what is good for krishna is bhakti this is also very subtle line for example अन्य अन्यभिलाषित शून्य ज्ञान कर्माद्य नावृत आनुकूल कृष्ण अनुशील भक्तिरुत्तम हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नॉट इज वर्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्स टू नो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो वट इज भक्ति आनुकूल कृष्ण अनुशील भक्तिरुत्तम activities which are favorable towards krishna is bhakti for example putna who was putna a demon a witch sister of kamsa sister of kamsa no who said that no she is sister of bakasur not kamsa aho bakiyam her name is baki nickname of putna baki <coughs> bakasur bak and his sister baki she is having the potency of 10000 elephants can you imagine 10000 elephants one elephant is he can destroy the whole forest 10000 elephant strength in putna 
she came to kill krishna when he was just six day young boy not even six years smearing poison on her breast she wants to kill krishna and with his lips krishna with his lips he killed putana even though she was demon but disguised as a motherly form so seems like she came to feed krishna but the mood is unfavorable not favorable towards krishna unfavorable mood so this is not considered as bhakti understand <clears throat> there were two big wrestlers in the arena of kamsa now try to understand this enough of learning vaishnava the sadachar now mix with some hari katha because this is also learning what is actually bhakti krishna he possesses all opulences and one of the opulences is strength he has so much strength and those who have strength you know they always wants to apply their strength means they want to have fight to relish to taste yeah. krishna also very powerful he saw two wrestlers in the arena of kamsa charan mushtik they came to fight with krishna not to give pleasure to krishna but to kill krishna so they embraced krishna so tightly they were like huge body like bouncers krishna young boy how old krishna was 10 years 2 months some days only 10 years only young body a uh, young boy and the charan mushtik big body and they embrace krishna krishna is re- relishing is tasting this because he is applying his strength and fighting with those wrestlers so that means those wrestlers is giving pleasure to krishna because he is enjoying being getting fighting with charan mushtik Yes, he has so much strength. He is relishing fighting with Charan Mushtik. Krishna is relishing this, but this is not called bhakti. Why not? Even if Krishna is relishing, cannot call bhakti. No, because the mood of those wrestler is to kill Krishna. Unfavorable mood. Not favorable mood. <clears throat> so when the mood is unfavorable, cannot call. bhakti on the other side shila gurudev explained mother yashoda ana putting baby krishna on lap <coughs> making krishna drink breast milk but she saw a milk was boiling on a stove <coughs> and milk was coming out mother yashoda took krishna and threw it on the ground and she ran to save that milk and krishna became displeased <clears throat> and also feeling upset mother is loving milk more than me <clears throat> i was i'm relishing i'm tasting i'm starving i'm drinking breast milk but mother yashoda she runs to save that milk that means she give more priority to the milk and less to me krishna became upset is this is bhakti <coughs> yes prabhu why it is bhakti <laughs> because guru dev said <laughs> that's a good answer <coughs> hmm because it's a favorable mood because it's in service to the mother yes because the mood is favorable she has no animus animosity towards krishna the mood is to serve krishna because she is concerned about that milk which is milk belongs to a cow called padma <clears throat> i heard a post i read a post where they describe what is the glories of the cow called padma very special cow mother yashoda she used to make uh, milk butter with uh, 
butter from the milk of that Padma cow. The speciality is 10,000 cows. How many cows uh, Nand Maharaj have? 900,000. The milk of 10,000 cows given to 1,000 cows. The milk of that 1,000 cows selective given to the uh, 100 cows. And the milk of that 100 cows given to 10 cows. And the milk of that 10 cows is given to Padma. She is very fat. Very fat. Imagine how much potency. <coughs> And Yashoda Maya, she make Krishna drink the milk of that Padma cow and butter with that cow. A churning yogurt and all that process. So she don't want to waste that milk because she want to make sandesh and many other sweets. And her mood, her intent is Krishna can drink my milk any other time. But if this milk get destroyed, how am I going to make sweets for Krishna? So for the pleasure of Krishna, even making Krishna upset, she run to save the milk. Yes? Two different activities. One is, on one side, Charan Mushtik fighting with Krishna and Krishna is relishing this fight. It's pleased. But this is not Bhakti. Krishna is pleased, is not Bhakti? No. Because the mood of that those wrestlers is to kill Krishna. On the other side, Yashoda Maya displeasing Krishna, making Krishna crying upset. But this is bhakti because the mood is favorable. <clears throat> Just like at home, we see tiny boys and girls, uh, very stubborn. Mom, I want this. Mom, I want this. Uh, I want to chop vegetables. Give me knife. Mom, no. You cannot. You are going to harm yourself. No, I want to do this. She even slap and snatch away the knife from the hand of mother. So it looks like she has no bhakti. She has no love for the child. Is it true? She has so much love. That's why she is chastising and correcting and slapping. Slapping in India, not in America. <coughs> and also in Guyana. Sometimes Mataji say, don't make me become Guyanese. <laughs> I'll become Guyanese on you. <laughs> and the child understand. What is the meaning of <laughs> becoming Guyanese on you? means. <laughs> this is Bhakti. Which is not pleasing to Krishna, but what is good for Krishna is bhakti. Anukulena <coughs> Krishna nushilana bhakti ruttama. Ah. This is the meaning of bhakti. In our daily practices also, we are, in one sense we are doing bhakti, but in the other sense, this is not bhakti. We are striving for bhakti. We are practicing to get bhakti. I don't know which lifetime it will come. Lifetime, not years. How many years chanting? Gurudev used to ask in the audience. Hey, how many years you chanting mantras? And devotee used to say, Gurudev, 10 years. So you think you are doing bhakti? 20 years, 30 years? 20 lifetimes, not years. Then you think you can get bhakti. Twenty lifetimes, not years. Those activities which are meant only to please Krishna is called bhakti. That's the formula. <clears throat> and for that, devotees, even if they go through some troubles and turbulences in their life, <clears throat> they don't complain Krishna for that. You know, let's say Pandavas. Devotees of Krishna, you see. Yudhishthir Maharaj, she has so, he has so much love for Krishna. Bhim, and what to speak of Arjun, and Draupadi. 
her name is krishna one of the name of draupadi is krishna so much love <clears throat> but what they have to go through 12 year exile and one year what is that year called in english agyatvas Huh? Incognizant? Incognizant? Incognizant. Huh? Duryodhan made this because Yudhishthi Maharaj, he, he defeated in the dice game. And the condition is whoever got defeated, defeat, going to go 12 years in exile and one year hiding. And if we see, detect you, again you have to go 12 year exile. So somehow they, twelve huh, years they move around many territories of India, and those places where Pandavas went becomes huh, the pure places becomes Tirthas. Those territories where Pandavas didn't went is called Pandav Varjit Desha, means impure, contaminated. Yes, but then one year hiding, how they got hiding? It has so much to do with Prashottam month. <clears throat> so much to do with this month. So Pandavas thinking, where are we going to go hide? Because Duryodhan, very wicked. He's going to check on us. And if he detect us, see us, again we have to go 12 years in exile. So better we should hide somewhere. Where to hide? Five of them, six of them, five Pandavas and Draupadi, they came to one kingdom, hmm. Vidheraj, one kingdom. First of all, Yudhishthir came, the palace, approached the king, O king, O noble king, I am very expert, I, I want to serve you, can you keep me as an employee? in your palace, what you know? What can you do for me? Yudhishthira Maharaj said, I am very expert in, placing, uh, in playing dice game. Because kings, they used to play dice. The king said, okay, I will keep you as my servant. Imagine Yudhishthira Maharaj, who is Yamraj, and who is king, now acting as servant to this king and Ah, pleasing him by playing dice game with him. Meanwhile, Bhim also came with Gamcha on his shoulder. And he said, Oh, noble king, I'm looking for some job. I'm wandering here and there. Can you give me some job in your palace? What do you know? I know very good cooking. <laughs> Putting Gamcha on the shoulder. I know very good cooking. When I see Shravan Prabhu in Hawaii, in Bajar, when he cooks day and night, he has gumcha on his shoulder, reminds me of Bhim Sen. <laughs> huh. Who can cook good? Who knows how to eat good? What? Oh, he knows how to cook. Okay. He also know how to eat good? Yes. Because if you don't know how to eat good, then you don't even know how to cook good. And I don't even know how to serve good. You know, if you are very, if you have specifications like, you know, this is delicious, this is not delicious, this is good, this is that, selective, then you can also serve good. But if you have no consideration, whatever in your plate, just fill your belly and that is, is good for renunciation. Doesn't matter chapati is raw or nicely cooked or just put in your mouth, in your belly. How can that person serve? You know? So Bhim, he said, I am very good cook. I can cook for you. King said, okay, go to my kitchen and cook for me. Then came Arjun. Luckily, Arjun got a curse in that year. Arjun came in a very uh, yeah. dancing posture. He became what? What is the word? Unique in that one year. 
Why he became unique? <clears throat> Arjun went to Swarg, and there, in the palace, uh, I mean the, in the palace of Indra, <clears throat> there are so many heavenly, beautiful girls, and best amongst them is Urvashi. Urvashi. Uh, she manifested by Narnarayan Bhagwan. Urvashi. So when Urvashi saw Arjun, she got attracted towards Arjun. Beautiful personality, strong man, know all the arts and is Gudakesh. Gudakesh means one who can control sleep. Arjun, you can control your eating, but it's so difficult to control sleep. But Krishna addressed Arjun, sees the glories of Arjun. Krishna addressed Arjun, your Gudakesh, means the controller of your sleep. So seeing his features, strength, Urvashi got attracted. And then she proposed to Arjun. Arjun said, Mother, what are you saying? Urvashi said, Mother, how can you call me mother? I am proposing you. Arjun said, but because you are pleasing my father, Indra. Arjun is son of Indra. Kunti Devi invoked Indra and got Arjun. This is all in Mahabharata. So because you dancing in the courtyard of my father Indra, you please my father. <coughs> That's why in that regard, in that relation, you are like my mother. Urvashi became so upset. I curse you. You are speaking like a eunuch. May you become eunuch for one year. Arjun got this curse, but this curse helped Arjun. And in a very dancing posture, Arjun came to the king, said, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> what can you do? He said, I'm very good in dancing. Then king said, okay, I have one daughter called Uttara. Go and teach my daughter dance. Arjun started dancing, uh, teaching out Uttara. And then came Nakul. King, I'm also looking for some work. And king is thinking, why today everyone is coming for work? <laughs> <laughs> the Pandavas want to hide in that for one year in that kingdom. No one can see them. So king asked, Nakul, what you can do? He said, I'm very expert. Uh, to check horses just by smelling the urine of the horse I can tell how important is that horse is. King said well that what I want because I need horses for my and for me and for my soldiers and ministers so go in the horse stable and look after all the horses and tell me which is the best horse then came Sayadev I am also looking for some work. What you can do? He said, I am very good in serving cows. Then, okay, go to Gaushala. Serve my cows. Then came Draupadi. She said, O oh, king, I am wandering here and there. I also want one job. Want some work. What you can do? She said, I am very good in decorating hairs. Then the queen said, I'm going to take her. Every day she's going to decorate different hairstyles, my hairs. In this way, all the pandas, they got some kind of work. Hmm. Arjun is teaching dance to Uttara. Hmm. Even Uttara got attracted to Arjun. And Arjun said, no. I am teaching you, but if you are attracted towards me, I am going to marry you with my son. Who is the son of Arjun? Uttara and Abhimanyu. Because Abhimanyu is also very beautiful, handsome like Arjun. When this was happening for a while, for some months, 
Uttra has his brother called Uttar. Very proud of his strength. And he was thinking, hmm, I can defeat anyone. <clears throat> so, big story in Mahabharat. Something happened is that Uttar got challenged from the Kauravs, from Duryodhan party, to have fight, war and battlefield. Uttar said, I am not less. I want to go and have battle, fight with the Kauravs. When Uttar was challenging this and Arjun was thinking, what are you saying? Can you fight with Kauravs? You know who are there in their sight? Uttar said, I don't care. March. Arjun said, okay, then I'm going to sit in the chariot and I'm going to ride your chariot. Uttar started laughing. Ha, huh. Arjun, oh, not Arjun, you go and teach dance. This is about Kshatriyas. This is about warriors. You can't handle riding chariot. You just go and teach dance. This is your only work. Arjun said, I am also very expert in driving chariot. Because Arjun knew very well what is going to happen in the battlefield if Uttar, this king, this prince going to see the you know, opposite party. When they are going to see Bhishma, going to see Karna, Drushasana, Duryodhan, all this Dronachare. Huh, Uttar will be killed. So Arjun said, I also know very, I am very expert in riding chariot. So he jumped on the chariot. Arjun jumped on the chariot. And they came in the battlefield. Prince Uttar saw in front of him, Bhishma, Dronachare, Kripachare, Karna, Duryodhan, Dushasan start sweating. Baba, I cannot... I cannot. He told his ministers, let's go back. We can't fight. Then Arjun said, Hey, why are you coward? A Kshatriya never show back to enemies. Fight with them. Uttar said, no. What you speak of me? Even my father cannot fight with them. I want to go back. Otherwise, I'll be killed. Uttar, Arjun said, keep quiet. Sit down. And give this bow and arrow to me. I am going to fight on your behalf. <clears throat> Uttar said, Are you crazy? You know what you are speaking? You only know how to teach dance. Somehow I brought you in the battlefield. <laughs> you want to get killed? And you want to make me get killed? <laughs> no, let's go back. Arjun said, Shut up, keep quiet. <laughs> and Arjun bind him with a rope in the chariot. You sit down and give me bow and arrow. Arjun took the bow and arrow and one by one he had fight with Duryodhan. He defeated Duryodhan. He fight with Dushasan, defeated Dushasan. He fight with Bhishma, he defeated Bhishma. Karna, everyone. And to surprise Prince Uttar is thinking, who is he? <laughs> He's defeating all these great warriors. Surprise. When everyone got defeated, then Duryodhan came forward. Oh, I am 100% sure he is Arjun. What is happening? Why can't arrange before? <clears throat> Anything else to be? Also she need Achman and all that. What I was saying? I'm hundred percent sure he's Arjun because no one else can defeat this uh, these great warriors. So before one year lapse, I found out he's Arjun. Now you have to go again to Alir in exile. But Arjun said, no, one year is completed. Why? How come? He said, in those 12 years, there are so many times Purushottam month came. <laughs> Every third year is Purushottam month, additional month. 
According to Duryodhan, he has no concept of Prashota month. <clears throat> Therefore, those karmis, they consider Prashota month as mal mass, contaminated. They have no regard. But for devotees, it's great respect and great honor. Prashota month. In those 12 years, at least there will be four times Prashota month. So Arjun said, yes. Huh? One year elapsed. So our what tenure of moving around here and there is finished. Now we are free because of Purushottam month. <clears throat> then the prince Uttar is thinking, oh my goodness, they are Pandavs and serving us in our palace. He came back and informed his father, father, they are Pandavs. This person who is playing dice with his Yudhishthir, one who is in the kitchen is Bhim, and his Arjun, and his Nakul Sahadev. They all got surprised. So we are so sorry, we are so sorry. You are great personalities. You are serving like servants here. Yeah. Then they felt repentance. <clears throat> but anyhow, I told this story because of Pandavas have so much love for Krishna. Difficult times. You know, Gurudev used to tell this. You cannot get that difficult time as Pandas gone through. <laughs> At least you are not homeless. You are not wandering in the forest. Although in the retreat location, we are in the forest, but in a very nice house with all facilities. At least seven bathrooms are there. <laughs> AC is there. Some inconvenience is there. We are very sorry for that. Because it's first time the devotees, they tried best. As best. But it's not that bad, right? Some little austerities is always needed. <laughs> but next time we are going to find better location. With all comfort. Because now hmm, the devotees, they, the team, they got an idea how the retreat locations is about. So some austerities. But we are not going through that difficult time as Pandavas gone through. Why? Being the devotees of Krishna, they have to go through all those difficulties. Burned in the lake house, got poisoned, in forest, 12 years, nothing to eat, where to sleep, Attacked by demons, Hadimba came. You know Hadimba? She came to eat Pandavas. They were sleeping. Hadimba, huge body, Rakshasi. You know, but Bhim, Bhim settled Hadimba. <laughs> he was strong. And then Hadimba got married with Bhim. Adima got married with Bhim. So, in this way, Prahlad Maharaj gone through so many difficulties. We are not going through those difficulties yet. We have other kind of difficulties. Very small in nature and we start getting restlessness. You know? Bhakti makes strong. In Even in that difficult situations, they are not giving up their practices or their love for Krishna. That's why this is known as unconditional selfless love. Krishna, if I am worshipping you, I am getting difficulty, then what is the point of serving you and worshipping you? No Hare Krishna, no Hare Bol, go away. Oh, you are being devotees? You are not getting wealthy? What is the point of chanting Hare Krishna day and night, saying Hari Bol, Hari Bol, shouting? You are not getting much money? Or you are not socializing? Or many people, uh, people say many things. What it has to do with bhakti? 
डेट हैज टू डू विद भक्ति है ना सेल्फलेस अनकंडीशनल इन वट एवर सिचुएशन कृष्णा यू वॉन्ट टू पुट मी आई विल नेवर गिव अप चैंटिंग होली नेम गुड डे वॉज सेंग इन लेक्चर श्री हरिदास ठाकुर वॉज गेटिंग बीटन इन ट्वेंटी टू मार्केट प्लेस इज सो इजी टू से आई एम सेंग दिस इज सो इजी टू से राइट बट जस्ट रिलेट दिस फॉर फॉर वन मिनट इफ अ गाय कम आउट with a big cane four five and they want to beat us say if you chant hari krishna we will going to kill you no chanting hari krishna otherwise we going to beat you and with firm determination if i say no i will not stop chanting and if he start beating me what i'm going to do okay baba take mala i'm not going to chant hari krishna honestly right she haridas thakur was been dragged 22 market places 22 markets literally dragging and beating him stop chanting because haridas thakur born in a muslim family and from very birth is chanting hari krishna mahamantra so all other muslims and other became totally against him complain to the king and kings and his soldiers to beat him make him stop chanting hare krishna beating him beating him and what haridas thakur said khand khand hai yadi de amar tabu na chhadbe vadane hari naam even if you cut my body into 100 pieces i'm not going to stop chanting hare krishna do we have that firm conviction no so bhakti is very far one of our devotee in india we heard we saw him <clears throat> he used to preach one area where people used to have alcohol and cards in that intoxicated state he went there and started preaching everyone chant hare krishna <laughs> trying to imitate like nityam prabhu and haridas thakur <laughs> oh brothers why wasting time chant hare krishna go away from here otherwise we will going to kill you again next day chant hare krishna why wasting time and they literally start beating him with sticks and whatever shoes and whatever not one or two there were so many and he is continuously chanting hare krishna hare krishna they said stop chanting hare krishna if you are here in this area they beating him he got totally blood wounded everywhere is not stopping hare krishna keep on chanting hare krishna he said you going to kill me i'm not going to give up hare krishna that has become my life and literally they made him unconscious and throw him away but he he continuously chanting hare krishna very strong built so it's so difficult it's so easy to say shila haridas thakur <coughs> gone beaten 22 market places dragged literally by the soldiers but is not giving giving up chanting hare krishna so what is bhakti rare right now we are practicing and don't keep this in mind that oh bhakti means hare krishna people always get difficulties how about you all means everyone in the world are you not going through difficulties you don't show but you are crying and weeping of something you also have difficult times even the richest person have some difficulty even the demigods they have difficulties they always have difficulty because of what demons can come and snatch away our kingdom 
Even Brahma, he has end to his life. So who is not in difficulty? Everyone is in difficulty. So why to blame and accuse Hare Krishna people? We are in a better position. Once upon a time, a person came to Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He said, You are not seeing Krishna, your God. Why are you wasting all life chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna every day, 16 rounds, 20 rounds, 32 rounds? What if you come to know at the last breath of your life that there is no one, no Krishna, there is no God, there is no Krishna. If you come to know at the end of your life there is no God, there is no Krishna, you wasted all your life. And Srila Prabhupada, he was very expert in giving answers. He gave a very uh, wonderful answer. He said, okay, even if I come to know the end of my life, that there is no God, there is no Krishna, still there will be no loss. But if you come to know at the end of life that Krishna do exist and is a God, then your life is 100% waste. <laughs> I fully believe in God and I know Krishna is all pervading. For instance, one example for one second, if I believe your words, okay, Krishna doesn't exist. But what is the loss about? But if you come to the end of life, you cannot reverse, you cannot rewind your life. Then you completely waste, lost your life. You know? Therefore, focus on what acharyas, what authority is saying. Not focus on what simple, ordinary human being is saying. Human beings is full of faults and mistakes. They are not expert people. These are experts. These are authorities. I am going to follow them. Not any ordinary person in the street speaking whatever. I will follow them who have already followed that path and they attain perfection. And they are showing us, this is the only safest path. Maha jano je gathasa panthaha. Hear this attentively. What is the safest path? No highway is safe in the world. The safest path is what? The path which is shown by our Mahajans, our great devotees, our Acharyas. That is the most safest path. And this path is sanctioned, bona fide by all scriptures and authorities. So that's my safest path. But the path which anyone is showing to me, any human being is showing to me, is that authority? Is he authority? Is she authority? What authority do you have? Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah is not authority. Scriptures is authority. My Acharyas, my Gurudev, my Prabhupada is authority. I will follow them. Even if I go through difficult time, no worries. But I will follow them. But I am not going to follow any ordinary person. Even though if he is a movie star or whoever it is, president or prime minister, they are human beings. They are subject to death. They are subject to mistakes, faults. They are not perfect beings. Why have to follow them? Anda yatha anda upya manas teistantra uri dhamri bandaha. Parlaj Maharaj said, a blind person falling a blind person, what is going to happen? Therefore, be intelligent. Don't follow stupid people. Follow the scriptures. Parlad Maharaj is saying, Seven can to read that. If a blind man can tell you, Come behind me and I will take you to your destination. And you know what is going to happen. <laughs> blind men fall and make you also fall. 
in the clutches of Maya. To whom you are obeying and following is that liberated person. He is entangled. He is a servant of his senses and urges of his mind. And you are following that person who is a servant of the senses. We have to follow the person who is the master of the senses and the master of the mind. He can give us bhakti. Bhakt sanjate bhaktaya. Bhakti comes from the association of bhaktas. But if you start associating with non devotees, a bhaktas, what is going to happen? You think you can do bhakti? Crazy ideas will come then. The perceptions get totally diluted then because you are not following the footsteps of your acharyas. You are giving more value to the words of an ordinary person, not acharyas. And in fact, you will get reactions for that. Why reactions? Rejecting the words of acharyas and following the words of ordinary person. Isn't, isn't this called disrespect, disregard? Just for some name and fame, some material motivation, this is called disregard, disrespect. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sosri Thakur Prabhupada said very strongly, if you are not following, okay, 100% we cannot follow them, we have limitations, but the heart is there. I really want to follow them. But if you start following the words of atheist, you become atheist. That's called bad association. And in that bad association, you think you're chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, observing Kadashi, and you're doing bhakti. Not at all. Iti Pumsam Arpita Vishnu Bhakti Chanavlakshana. Prahlad Maharaj is saying this. So, Prahlad Maharaj is my authority. Bhagavatam is my authority. Prahlad Maharaj is my authority. Iti pumsa marpita vishnu bhakti chandam lakshana. Surrender yourself to Guru and Krishna and then follow the nine limbs of bhakti. Not that following nine limbs of bhakti and then surrender to Guru and Krishna. It's other way around. Where is your surrenderness to Guru and Krishna? You are not even following the words of your Guru. Because you are following the words of a bad association. That means it's disregard and disrespect to the scriptures. Disregard, dis disrespect to the holy name. Disregard, disrespect to your Guru and your Acharyas and the complete lineage. How are you expecting? A mercy and compassion will come to you because you are following a bad association. This is something very important to give up bad association. Bhagavatam says, Guru na sasyad, swajano na sasyad, pita na sa, swajanani na sasyad. You may take me wrong if I say this. I don't care. Because I am speaking Bhagavatam. I am not speaking my mind. <laughs> I come across many people in India. Whatever comes in their mind, they start speaking. They think they are very scholar. Isn't it Krishna said in Gita, do karmas, focus on your karma, your activity. You stupid person, you read Bhagavad Gita? Yes, I am Bhagavad Gita. Did Krishna inspire for performing karma or karma yoga? Is karma yoga, jnana yoga and bhakti yoga. Not karma, not jnana. Is karma yoga. Oh, in India, my goodness. Everyone thinks they are scholars. They pick something from here, pick something from there, pick something from there. 
read one this book, read that book, but not following one system, they think very intelligent. And they make everyone so impressed. Srila Prabhupada used to hammer these people. And the word Prabhupada used to use, very favorite word. Rascals. What word? Rascals. Rascals. <laughs> Abhajanti ma muda. Muda means foolish rascals who don't accept the authority of Krishna. They don't accept the authority of Krishna. Krishna told, Sarv dharman paritajya, give up all other, your mental concussion and surrender unto me. Are you giving up? You developing your own ideas, phonetic ideas, crazy ideas, which is not aligned with the words of the Acharyas, not aligned with the Bhagavad Gita. And you thinking, this is Bhagavatam, this is Bhagavad Gita? No. Mahajanoje Gatasa Pantha, the safest path, following the path of Mahajans. So don't get deviated with that. Guru na sasyat, sojana na sasyat, pita na sa, sojanani na sasyat. Bhagavatam, not me. I am not Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is Bhagavatam. That Guru is not Guru. That father is not father. That mother is not mother. That brother is not brother. That husband is not husband. All these relations are mentioned. Guru na sasyat, sojana na sasyat, pita na sa, sojani na sasyat. Bhagavatam. What kind of guru? Just like Bali Maharaj, he rejected his guru, Shukrachari. You know this? Bali Maharaj, his Guru Deva Shukrachari. Shivaman Bhagwan came, inspired Bali. I want three feet of land, measured by my own, not with anyone else. And Shukrachari came to his disciple Bali Maharaj and saying, Oh, don't give him anything. Because he's Vishnu, he's cheating you. So Bali Maharaj said, Guru Dev, you already know his Vishnu, then why are you stopping me surrendering to him? I didn't know his Vishnu. You telling me, because you my Guru, you telling me is Vishnu. If Vishnu is begging in front of me, I'll be foolish if I'm not going to give him. I want to give him everything. No, Bali, you are my disciple. If you give everything to Vishnu, there's nothing left for me. <laughs> Bali Maharaj rejected his Guru. You stopping me to surrender to Lord. Rejection. Then who is idol Guru? The idol Guru is Sri Narad. Who made so many having darshan of Krishna and in the service of Krishna. What are examples? Dhru Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj. And so many, Valmiki, Vyasadev, Sri Narad had so many disciples. The best Guru is Sri Naraji. Otherwise, reject that Guru. As Bali Maharaj rejected Shukrachare. And then, Mother. Who rejected Mother? Who rejected Mother? What? Bharat Maharaj Ramchandra never rejected Kakai. Never. Ramchandra never rejected Kakai. Even at the point that Bharat came, you know that the famous story Gurudev used to tell when Bharat came and want to take Ramchandra back. <coughs> Sri Ram said, No, Bharat. <coughs> Long story. But the last, in the last, Bharat Maharaj said, Can I ask you something? Ram said, Bharat, whatever you want to ask, I am always there to fulfill your desire, but <clears throat> don't ask me to come back to kingdom before 14 years. 
Other than that, you can ask me anything. Then Bharat Maharaj said, ah, Please give me your wooden shoes. I want to place these shoes on the kingdom. <clears throat> they are going to rule Ayodhya, not me. And I will be the servant of those shoes. I want this from you. Immediately Ram gave shoes. Then Sri Ram said, Bharat, similarly, I also want to ask one thing from you. And Bharat said, you can ask me anything, but don't ask me that address Kakai as mother. Other than that, I can fulfill all your orders. But don't ask me to address Kakai as my mother. Ram said, Bharat, this is what I want. Never reject Kakai. She is your mother. You don't know how much she loves me. You don't know how much she loves you. Bharat said, I can't do this. I can chop off my head. Anything you want from me. But I can't address her as my mother. Because of her words, you are in forest today. <clears throat> so Bharat Maharaj, he rejected his mother Kakai. But who is the idol mother on the other side? Suniti, the mother of Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruv Maharaj being five year young boy going to forest, Suniti is not stopping Dhruv. Parents here, can you allow your five year young boy or girl to go in the forest here without any support? Or help? No one can do this. Suniti didn't stop Dhruv Maharaj. Why? Well, she's not. It's just a stories, a comics. This is facts. And even though Dhruv Maharaj is a prince, his father Utanpa, the ruler of the whole planet Earth, Dhruv Maharaj prince. Guard have so many soldiers as his guards and all luxuries is going to forest. Suniti didn't stop Dhruv. With this belief, if you're going to forest for Krishna, then Krishna is your protector. Firm conviction. We don't have this. I mean, I can't even see any young boy, five year young boy going in those trees in that forest. In the morning I saw the kids were playing. Two girls were playing, small tiny girls playing there. And I saw cars were moving. I said, come back, come back. And in the midnight, in dark, if any small five-year young boy or girl going in the forest, will we allow them? Come back, boy. Suniti didn't stop Dhruv Maharaj firm conviction that he is going for Krishna, then Krishna is going to protect him. Who, are, who am I to protect him? Can you value that? It's so difficult. Suniti is idol mother. Then comes to father. Who rejected father? Who rejected father? Parlad Maharaj. Write down. Pallad Maharaj rejected his father Hinya Kashipu, who is the ruler of the all universe, the three worlds. So powerful. Huh? If father is so powerful, the son can take advantage of this. Yeah, my father, he even made the demigods in control. Everyone scared of him can take advantage. Just like Nalkuber Manigrib. Nal Kuber Mandir Grieve, their father was Kuber, very rich personality and intoxication, intoxicated state of thinking that my father is great because he is very rich and wealthy. They were huh, naked bathing with girls in the pond and they offended Naradji in that intoxicate consciousness that my father is very rich. But Parlad Maharaj, he could have taken advantage of this situation. My father is super rich. 
is next to God. But Prahlad Maharaj, no. You are against the idols. You are against Bhakti. You are against Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj, not taking advantage of this opportunity. One who take advantage of opportunities called opportunities. Oh, Krishna Mohan Prabhu, you are a very wealthy person. I start praising you. Because I will get some money from you. Start praising you. And start following you. Whatever you say is right. Whatever you say is correct. Yes, my Gurudev said that's also correct. But I value more your words because I am going to take opportunity to drive some money from you. Flattering you. My purpose is not to love you, but only love your wealth and your facility. That's the purpose. Taking advantage. Pallad Maharaj, not taking advantage of the situation. He could have also enjoyed being the prince. The father Hinyakashipu is so rich, wealthy. 33 million demigods became servant to Hinyakashipu. Imagine. Directions, sun, moon, everyone terrified. Prahlad Maharaj could have taken advantage of this situation. But he is not opportunist. He rejected his father, going against the ideals of the scriptures, going against Krishna. Hinekashipu is thinking, I am God. And who can be more intelligent than me? And Hinekashipu was also speaking Shastras. Huh? <laughs> you read 7 Canto Bhagavatam? Hinekashipu speaking scriptures. His thinking is very intelligent because he also knows scriptures. But useless knowledge. Which not making him surrender to Krishna. That knowledge is useless knowledge. Even though he is speaking. Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Gosai Mara used to say, even devils quote Shastras. <laughs> even devils they quote Shastras. Hinyaka is speaking Shastras. But useless. Thinking is very intelligent. There are so many people like this also. <coughs> it looks like they are speaking Shastras. This, but they are demons. In disguise of speaking the Shastras. Demons. Because say say vidyara follow janyo nishchai krishna pad padma yadi chitta vritta rai. What is the purpose of knowledge, according knowledge? To develop attachment to the lotus feet of Krishna. That's the only purpose of knowledge. But Prahlad Maharaj didn't take advantage of this situation. Uh, rejected his father, Vidyakashipu. Then who is idol father? Rishabdev, idol father. Then comes to brother. Who rejected brother? Vibhishan. Rejected his brother Ravan. Yes? In Ram Leela? The same example with Vibhishan. He could have also taken advantage of the situation. My brother Ravan, my goodness, Ravan was so powerful. He lifted Kalash. <laughs> he used to worship Shiva. And Shiva huh, reside in Kalash, that mountain. Ravan lift the Kalash mountain like this. How powerful is he? And Ravan knew all the Vedas. Can you imagine? You only know, we only know 20, 30, 40 shlokas of Bhagavatam and Gita. We think we are very expert. Ravan knew three Vedas. In knowledge he is so great. In strength so great. But demonic. That knowledge 
is not to surrender to the Lord, that knowledge is useless. Otherwise, he could have surrendered to Ram. But he became against to Ram, thinking, who can be more great than me? So Vibhishan, the brother, could have also taken the opportunity. Oh, my brother Ravan is so famous, so powerful, so knowledgeable, so wealthy, and I can be with him, next to him. Then I'll be also sitting on the same throne and enjoy all those riches and everything. But no. Vibhishan said, no, cross. My brother Ravan is not aligned with the scriptures. He is not aligned with devotion practices. He is not surrendered to my Ram. Vibhishan knows very well, Ram is God. Ravan is pretending to be God, but he is not God. Pretendence is different, right? So no compromise. These two examples very important. Prahlad Maharaj <coughs> and Vibhishan. No compromise. I am doing my bhakti and I fully believe Krishna is God, Ram is God. I fully believe Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, scriptures they are bona fide. I fully believe the path shown by my Gurudev and Acharyas is a perfect path. It is going to lead me to perfection. I am not going to hear here and there. That is all bad association. <coughs> it is all bad association. <clears throat> Never compromise. Vibhishan rejected his brother Ravan. Then who is idol brother? Vidur. Vidura is idol brother. Who came to Dhritarashtra? Who is blind? Chastise his brother. Oh Dhritarashtra, you are blind. Not with eyes but also with your intelligence. You don't understand. You are following the words of your son Duryodhan and not surrendering to Krishna. Vidur Niti, very famous. Vidur Niti. This is the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Idol brother, idol <coughs> son, idol mother, idol father. Otherwise, all those other relations rejected. Yeah. Who is idol husband? Kardam. Who worshipped Kapil Bhagwan? But just like the gopis, oh, sorry, the Dujapatnis, the Brahman wives, rejected their husbands. All this rejections and acceptance is mentioned in scriptures. So if we are not familiar with this details, the topics of scriptures, Bhagavatam, we cannot understand what is bhakti. You know? So knowing philosophy and then chanting, coloring color festival philosophy coloring with sankirtan that's bhakti sitting one hour and hearing krishna katha hari katha looks like very simple it's not that simple we are very fortunate we are hearing bhagavatam we are very fortunate we are chanting hare krishna which is the most important practice in this Iron Age Kali Yuga. We are so important. Understand your importance. I want to say this in the last. Understand your importance. You are not ordinary. You are important. We are not hum ordinary human being. We all are Vaishnavs and Vaishnavis. Even though we are practicing with our limitations. But we are in the process. Understand? We are important. So sometimes we need to develop this ego also. Not for the devotee section, but for 
comparing with outsiders. This ego helps us in making us firm in conviction in our bhakti. Yes, I am important because I am devotee of Krishna. We should feel proud of it. I am devotee of Krishna. Hanuman, he feel proud of him. I am servant of Lord Ram. He is not shy. How will I say to everyone, I am devotee of Ram? No. Boldly, proudly, yes, I am the servant of my Ram. Arjun feel pride to say, huh, I am friend of Krishna and devoted to Krishna. Prahlad Maharaj feel pride to say, and these are not ordinary personality, they are kings and princes. Prince. Ah, this is all about high profile people. All these examples. <laughs> high profile, not low profile. Prahlad Maharaj Prince. Yudhishthir Maharaj King. Vibhishan King. Feel proud. So why not we feel proud of? Saying that yes. Whoever say whatever, I am devotee of my Krishna. I feel proud of myself that I have chosen this most auspicious path. It is going to lead me to all auspiciousness. I have firm conviction in this. Because this is the words of Acharyas. This is the word spoken by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita. And this is in Bhagavatam. I feel proud of this. Okay, This platform is very important in this new fight stage. This foundation, this platform is very important. Yeah. Otherwise, we will lose hope. We will start thinking we are also like other people in the streets. So what they are doing, we also should do. No. This pride helps us in making distinction with those who are ordinary in the streets. They have no purpose of their life. We have a great purpose of our life. Because we came in this process and it's guaranteed in one lifetime, ten lifetime, hundred lifetime, it's going to happen now. It started. The process has started. It's going to happen. The words of Gurudev cannot go in vain. And he told, Once you are in this process, I am going to take you to Krishna. How can I don't believe in the word of my Gurudev? Who boldly said this. So this pride is going to help us. I am proud of Boldly saying, yes, I am devotee of Krishna. When we go at airport, I go all over the world, different countries. People look at me. Airplane, airports. They like literally stare from top to bottom. What is this? <laughs> in earlier days, in 70s, I used to hear this gone. <coughs> People used to say, oh, what is this? You are wearing your bed sheet? <laughs> <laughs> but now everyone is aware of this yeah. people guys they see us in street they say oh Hare Krishna people I feel proud of this yes, yes I am devotee of Krishna what's wrong in that if you don't feel shy doing sins why I, don't, I feel shy becoming <laughs> Krishna devotee I am not doing any wrong I am chanting so I chant at airport, I chant in airplane. People see this. They give respect. They regard. Or if they don't give, how does it matter to me? Yeah. So we have to maintain this pride. I am devotee of Krishna. My life is for Krishna. And whatever formalities I have to perform in householder life, my duties, I am doing that. But parallel to that, I am also maintaining my spiritual life. And there will always be ups and downs. It's going to happen. It's never going to stop. Unless we get perfection. And for that, we have to wait for lives, births. Ah, this is going to happen. 
ups and downs, ups and downs. But I'm firm conviction. I'm going to follow Ekadashi Vrat. I'm going to fast on Janmashtami. I'm going to chant every single day. I'm not going to waste one day of my life without chanting the names of the Lord. Making every day the most successful and auspicious day. Because auspiciousness is not about that today I am not able to earn $2,000. Auspiciousness is today I earned 10 rounds of chanting. I earned this. Today I earned 16 rounds of chanting. That should be the conclusion in the night. How much I remembered Krishna today. This my ultimate wealth at the bottom line, the end of the day. Money comes and money goes. Today earning 100, tomorrow maybe 500. Some days will be lost, some days will be more profit. You know, I was speaking to one devotee, saying, I said money always comes and goes, never stay. But the opportunity of association Whenever it is available, immediately avail that. You can't purchase that. The opportunity of service, the opportunity of association, you can't get in Target or Costco. Not in wholesale. You know, this retreat is a retail. Like store, buying small, what? Two pound, three pound weight of some rice. But Costco is like going Vrindavan Kartik Parikrama. That's wholesale. Big. Yeah. Buying big things. Big association. In Dham. Spending 30 days. Yeah. One time try this. At least one time in life. Spending 30 days in Kartik. Or seven days, eight days in Navdeep Parikrama. Or India tour. Mm. Whenever there is opportunity of association, avail that without any delay. Gaur Primanam De Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama. Loud. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Very good. So, tomorrow morning, we are going to be our last program. Same schedule, Mangalati, 6.30. And then, after Bangal Aarti, a short program, Hari Katha. And we start uh, around 9 o'clock. We're going to have breakfast and then start wrapping things. And leaving this place, <laughs> settling down. And we leave this place uh, around 11 o'clock. Yes? That's the schedule? Huh? Yeah, if you say 11, it's going to be 12. <laughs> so better 11. We leave this place and... Any inconvenience, not any, but the many inconvenience. <laughs> so we ask forgiveness for that and try best the next time to serve devotees a more better way. And as I said, first time experience here in New York. So was not so much familiar, but now we got along with more, you know, exploring more places. Uh, more opportunities, I mean to say. <clears throat> so it was wonderful experience being here with all of you because you all gave me your ears and gave me this opportunity to fill those ears with some topics which I heard from Srila Gurudev. I tried to fill those ears which I got filled, tried to get filled from my Gurudev. Uh, the same mood, the same feelings, and same bold thoughts I shared with all of you. And many devotees, even young ones, they learned so much. 
I won't say the old ones because no one is old. Everyone is under 35. No one is old. Otherwise, they feel bad if I say old. <laughs> so everyone got to learn so much. Keep on learning. It's going to help us in practicing bhakti more purely. You know. And by saying this in the last about India tour, repeating again because now I'm not going to see you for another month or two months. So again repeating that we starting India tour. We all know from March 27 to April 5. We're going to Shirangam, Rameshwaram, Govardhan, Gokul, Rahul, all this Vrindavan. So please contact Krishna Prem Prabhu. Raise your hand. Everyone knows Krishna Prem. Please contact him. Give your names. All details will be given by him to all of you. And in this way, I'm getting coordinated with him and Naveen also get coordination with Krishna Prem Prabhu. And this way, in this coordination, let us know in advance so there will be no any slacking in arrangements. You know? Since this, I'm ending up here. It's almost 7.45. Time for Arati. Shishi Radha Govindu Ki Jai. Shishi Gaunitanan Prabhu Ki Jai. Okay. Vanchakal Pataru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyascha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vashya. I wanted some devotees to speak tonight but postponed for tomorrow morning. So be ready. I am going to ask some devotees to speak. Samadhi Katha. Hare Krishna. A short Maha Mantra. Nilambara. Maha Mantra. Five minutes. Vedanga. Yes, Satya Govind is here. Yeah, he is also there.
Then he already gave me donation. One way to go. <laughs> this is a sign of going. <laughs> so I think, Nandan, you have to ask me. He will go.